Good evening and welcome. Tonight we will be going over the brief geography and history of Agin Buryat Okrug within Russia. Now it is not marked on my map, it's about here or so. And that's because the borders seem to be a bit iffy and a little unofficial. Like there are borders, but they seem to be more cultural than political. So I'm actually going to grab my tablet now and show you on Google Earth. Because even if you type it into Google Earth, nothing pops up. You just see the sort of quote-unquote capital administrative center. It says here of Agin Buryat Krug. Agin let me zoom out so you can see exactly where we are in the world. Here we are in what's technically like the southern border of Russia, but there's nothing really southern about this place. It's a very northerly place in the world. And you can see we are very close to the border of Mongolia here. You can see Lake Baikal right here. And let me show you the slideshow of Akinskoy real quick a little Russian town you can see here, but the people here, the Buryats, are a Mongol people. As you can see here, they are very proud of their heritage. So while well, you can see elements of, you can see this is a Russian Orthodox church here, there are many elements of the Tibetan Buddhist religion um, in their architecture. It's a really cool statue. I think there's a better picture of it. It had lots of um, Mongol-influenced architecture and lots of cool Mongolian-looking statues and things throughout the city here. Let's see. And this is kind of an example of what the landscape looks like. It's very hilly around the city. As you expand further southward, it gets much more mountainous. Yeah, look at her warrior. Very cool. There we go. So, it's a very small place. Looks like a little restaurant there. In a nutshell, that's it for the geography I have here. Let me move this out the way. So... All of that is very important to its history. As you can imagine, this is one of the many places where the Briati people lived. They lived pretty much all throughout the Baikal region. You can see here my map, it even says it's Trans-Baikal, along the Baikal. From what we can tell in ancient history, there were tribal peoples on this side of the lake and tribal peoples on this side of the lake. And you can see here, this is Buryatia, where the um, primary population of the Buryats live here. But we'll talk about it in history. So the first mention of them come from a Mongol description from 1207 when Genghis Khan began doing his thing and started conquering. This was one of the first places that he held under his dominion. They did resist, obviously, but it is the Mongols in the Mongols' backyard, so it's a little hard to resist that. Um, and like I said, this area was primarily Tibetan Buddhist. It's very, very important to their culture and heritage with their religion, and when you see the landscape of the kind of rocky, mountainous, but still kind of plains area. It, it reminds me a lot of the uh, Tibetan Buddhists throughout like Mongolia and China. Not so much in Tibet because those are mountains, right? <laughs> those are the Himalayas, but it's the same kind of landscape, so it's no doubt that that religion just swept its way up like that and reached up here. The Russians would enter this territory in um, 1643 was the exact date and of course the people weren't pleased about that and resisted but Russians now and then were very persistent peoples it uh, 
was annexed by Russia by 1727. And the city here of Akinskoye was founded sometime, it says on Wikipedia, sometime between 1781 and 1811. No exact date, but, you know, that's when the city, at some point around there, was established. And for the most part, compared to what would happen next in history, the Russians sort of left these people be. You know, as long as they were paying their dues and taxes, that was fine for Imperial Russia. But then the Soviets came in and they said, listen, you are now a part of us. And the people here said, uh, no, we're not. And the Soviets, you don't say no to the Soviets, especially in the 1920s, right? They said, um, we do not allow religion in our new nation, so you have to get rid of all the Buddhist stuff. And the people said, absolutely not. And there was a huge crackdown on Buddhist statues and stupas and all those things, which obviously the people did not enjoy. Not to mention, they introduced collectivization to the peoples here. Now, them being uh, a Mongol culture, they loved their cattle and grazing and being semi-nomadic. So they, the concept of collectivization was completely foreign to them and made no sense whatsoever, and they resisted very, very strongly. And of course, the Soviets fought back. Many, many Bryats lost their lives during this time, and many, many Bryats actually fled into Mongolia, fleeing the Soviets. So, there was some reorganization of the lands here, since the population shifted so much. By 1937, they established the Okrug of Agin Buryat Mongol, the Agin Buryat Mongol National Okrug. They removed the word Mongol in 1958, since, you know, these people are of Mongolian heritage, but they're not Mongols or Mongolians, right? They're Briot. And the area was made autonomous in 1977. And in 2008, when there was even more reorganization, this area became the Zabaikalski Krai. Zabaikalski Krai. So what is a Krai? What is an Okra? A cry is basically a word for, like, a district, state, etc. An okrug, which, from what I can understand, because when I look it up, it seems that, like, Russians trying to explain it can't even explain it, right? It seems to be the equivalent of what, in at least America, at least in California where I grew up, it was called a non-industrialized, or sorry, non-incorporated, that's the word, non-incorporated zone. So, I grew up in San Francisco. The farther east you get from San Francisco, the more farmy it gets till you get to the Central Valley, and there's lots and lots of little farming towns and farming communities there. Way too small to become an official town. It's like population 200 kind of places, like no more than a thousand people. So as cities spring up in those areas, those little farm communities get absorbed into the official town jurisdiction, but they're not part of the town. So it's kind of like that. Akim Buryat is part of Zabai Kjalski Krai, which is very hard to say, um, but it is still autonomous. It is still its own little zone, but not at the same time. It's very complicated. It's one of those things that just makes sense when you think about it, but explaining it is a whole other thing. It's a um, non-incorporated area, right? It's part of the cry, but at the same time autonomous. So that is that. And as you saw in the slideshow, it's a very beautiful place. Um, and from what I can tell, this is kind of the iffy part because at least over here in Buryatia, there is a bit of an independence movement. From what I can tell, it's kind of underground. Most of the people I found reporting on it 
were Ukrainian, so there's a bit of a bias. Not that I'm against Ukraine or anything, but I can't tell if it's like a big independence movement or if those Ukrainian reporters sought out like the extremists to get their angle on it, you know? They're kind of own bias. But nonetheless, there is an independence movement. How big it is, I can't really tell because obviously Russia isn't going to let that sort of news out, right? But from what I can tell, the people in this area at least have their own little corner of the world, which is kind of what they've always wanted, as we can see throughout history. And they are just kind of doing their own thing in this little area. We'll talk more about Briatia sometime in the future. It has a much more turbulent history than this little corner of the world. But I'm actually going to leave it there for tonight. It's very, very hard to find information on just this little area and not the entire cry or about this entire trans call area just this little corner it was very difficult I did my best but if you're new to my channel I am going over every single little tiny corner of the world in ASMR I'm calling it ASMR around the world next we are going to Turkey I know we've been to a lot of Turkey so far in this series but this place is really so please consider subscribing so you don't miss out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you found this video relaxing and educational. And I hope that you have a very good, 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 good night. Good night.